Our first scripture we're going to read is Genesis chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, you could turn there. I just want to know who we're talking to. I'd just like to know the audience. Um, the, how many, the lighting in here is yeah, I can, awesome. I can, be, I can barely I can see out see there. Like, yeah. How many are <laughs> married in this room? You're married. Raise your hands. Where are all my married couples at? Let me see. Well, we got a lot of married couples. How many singles in the house? You're not married. Keep your hand up a little longer. Keep your hand up. I might be able to hook you up after service. Let me see. <laughs> we'll do the love connection. Okay, I see you, brother. He was right here, Pastor Robert, right here. Hook me up. We got up. somebody pointing over here, like right here, You're like, right hook here. me up. I see. Well, yeah, come talk to us. We'll help you. We'll get you. We'll get you going. Say, yeah, you also, uh, now you're in. Say, oh, Pastor Robert, hook me up. All right, I see you over here. And how many singles want to get married? Where's that crowd at? Singles want to get married. Okay, a few other hands went down, a few of them. I think we lost about five or six of them. Um, how many married couples want to be single? Stop. I see like five hands go up. Father, help these couples today. Freedom today. In order to talk about marriage or relationships, we got to get what's the purpose of a marriage? Let's take a look at the first marriage, really, um, institution where God, God instituted. Look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 22. Look at the first marriage here. Genesis 2, 22 through 24 says, Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last the man exclaimed, This one is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united. So this is one. talking about humans. It's talking about Adam and Eve now, the first marriage. Write down these few facts about marriage. Maybe you didn't know this. Marriage is the oldest institution on earth that God created. Marriage is the oldest institution on earth that God created. It's even older than the church. Every time I think of that word institution, I think of like a stray jacket and <laughs> what is institution? This what is, is a that? this is what a good institution. Yeah, what does it mean? Okay. It's it means an organization. There you go. Somebody was like, oh my so the singles were getting scared. So it's not the, yeah. The singles like institution, I'm getting ready to go to prison when I get married. <laughs> it's the first group, the first organization that God created. I love this statement. I don't know. I don't think we said it last service. Um, every, uh, yeah, that one right there. I love that. Can you say that statement? Everything God does in society, he does it on the foundation of marriage. So if we wanted to change America, if we wanted to change America, all we would have to do is have a marriage conference like this seven days a week, 24 hours a day for like a week. And if we study the foundation of marriage, we study what it's all about. If we could fix relationships, we could fix America. Because everything is founded and based on a family unit. Right. And God chose the family unit to be one of the, or the, really the foundation of planet earth. I love that. I love this statement as well. A godly marriage is the cure for all the social sicknesses we're dealing with. A healthy, strong marriage is a cure. And maybe you're here today and you're thinking, man, I'm going through it. You're talking about a cure. What are you talking about? Uh, my marriage is on the rocks. We're declaring right now, your marriage is about to shift. Yeah. How many want to shift in their marriage? Yes. Maybe you're going this way and you're saying, oh, I don't like where it's going. I'm believing for a shift. And a couple, I heard you earlier with five kids, God's going to bless you guys. How many others got, how many got like four, four kids or more? Raise your hand. They need special prayer, honey, special yes. prayer. Four kids, five kids. How many got six kids? Six, all right, all right. I see you, I see you out there. We have, we have three kids. And we didn't short, did we show our kids? Yeah. We showed at 9 o'clock. Really quick, here's, here's, here's a couple of our kids right here. We got Mariah. She's, oh, no, maybe not. There's Mariah. You surprised them. There's Mariah, my 16-year-old daughter. Oh, there, there she goes right there. Goes. There's our daughter, Mariah. She's 16. She just started driving. She got her permit. It's scary. Who else we got, honey? Who do we got, who we got up there? We have Jazzy. We got Jazzy. Jazzy who is she? Jazzy is actually um, our foster daughter. Yes. She joined us um, this past August. Yeah. 
And the cool thing is, you know, she, she's, she's seeing God in the family. Right. And we're going to get into that a little bit later, the image of God more. And, and, and right now today, Jazzy, you know, we fostered her into the, to the, to our house. And she's singing in the worship team today. She joined the worship with the youth today. So that's our foster daughter. She's a daughter. Not even foster. I don't like to say foster. She's our other child. And we got Noah, 12 years old, right there. Pray for us. We need a lot of help with Noah. No, he's a good boy. Lord help him. God, now he's a great, great son. But that's our children. And, you know, talking about kids and family, you know, God instituted, the first institution was set up was marriage. And a lot of times, like, like you and I and family, we, we come from broken families, dysfunctional families. And, and maybe you're here today and you're saying, man, my family is going through a lot. And, you know, it, it reads here, talk about marriage and families, broken families. Here's a, just a few stats. 70% of the criminals right now, um, they come from broken homes. 70%. I mean, 70% really the prisoners in prison right now, they come from broken homes. 25 to 35% of foster youth will end up in prison. Um, teens, 15 to 18, are two times more likely to do drugs. And, and that, that's, that's what's happening. And maybe you're here today, you're saying, yeah, my, my kids are here or my family is here. Forget about the past. God is going to do something brand new. Yes. Can you turn to three people and tell them, say, tell them forget about the past. Forget about the past. Tell them. Tell the person behind you, you got to forget about the past. You got to forget about the past. How many ever made a mistake as a parent? How many made it? Yeah, we all, we all make mistakes, right? So we're now. So really we're, quick, we're, can, yeah. I just, yeah. can I just say something here? Yeah, okay, so, so my parents, they, they, um, they are divorced. And so I come from a home that has divorce in the background. Your parents weren't divorced. So my parents, I know, they made it to the 17-year mark. Me and Robert are actually 18, 18 years. years. 18 years. So they made it to the 17-year mark. But I remember, like, that was, I didn't realize it, but when we hit 17 last year, I thought to myself, oh, my goodness, this is the year my parents split. Wow. Wow. This was, this is when they, they didn't. So there was a little bit of, like, like an anxiety that was trying to like creep up on me. And then I realized, you know what? No, I'm breaking this. I'm breaking this. This, this ends with yeah. me. So we are here. We are 18 years and um, going strong. Yes. And hey, you look better. You even look better now than you did 18 years ago. I don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> Do you have Veronica? Where is she? Oh, We're my goodness. Show oh, Veronica. Oh. 18. Oh, my I've said it before, nothing to remind you how thin you were before you had kids, right? My goodness. You look beautiful, honey. <laughs> wow, what a great day. And like Veronica said, you know, we're here today and we're breaking those generational curses. Yes. How many with us today, we're breaking generational curses? Yes. 50% of marriages end the divorce, not, start, not here, not here, not here. We are going to make it. We will flourish. We will make it. Yes. And singles, you're going to make it too. One day when you get married. <laughs> we declare it now, singles. You want to go into it? Purpose number one? Let's jump in. Let's do it. Sure. Purpose um. number one. And you can read maybe Genesis chapter, yeah, ch chapter 1, verse 27, 28. Um, again, purpose number one. We're going to read it. But Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It says, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along yes. the ground. If we read the first portion of the scripture there, here's the first purpose. Look at the, the first part of that scripture. So God created human beings in his own image. Here's purpose number one of marriage. Purpose number one is to reflect God's image. Reflect God's image. What does that word image mean? Image is a God-given likeness or reflection, a tangible or visible representation. In other words, we'll even simplify it even more. The first purpose of a marriage is for people to see God. They should see how we forgive one another. They see God. They see the love that we have for one another, and it shows God. I want to give you a live example of what we're talking about really quick. Kurt, can you come up? Uh, Michael, can you come up? Bring your brother there. And I need a, one more guy. Who, let me see one more guy. Let me see. 
Can you, yeah, you want to come up? Yeah, come on up, come on up. Her husband's like, take him, take him. She's all, get him up there. There you go. Yeah, come on up. One more guy. Yeah, come on up. Sir so Kurt, we're going to have you stand over here for a second. Give it up for Kurt, you guys. Awesome, man. Yeah, you guys can stand there. Honey, you can stand over here. So you could go back a little more right there. Go back, go back, go back. Veronica, you can stay right here. Now, in the book of Genesis, if you go back to even chapter 1, it says, let us make man in our image. And woman, let us. That word us, it's plural. That word God in that scripture means Elohim. That's the Hebrew word that's found in that scripture of God. It means plural. It means literally God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So in the scripture in Genesis, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit created man. And I you see in Genesis, he's there. And now in Genesis 2, we read that a man shouldn't be alone and God brings Eve this way. Give it up for Eve, Veronica. <laughs> he brings us together. Now, if we're made in the image of God, you guys can maybe stand up maybe two steps this way. You go this way a little bit. If we're made in the image of God, do me and Veronica look like this right now? Do we look like this? We're missing something, right? But when we bring God into the picture, now we have the image of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's why in the book of Genesis, when Adam was by himself, the devil you read the serpent, never showed up. Adam wasn't that much of a threat. But when Eve came into the picture and with God right in the center, the devil was terrified. He goes, man, look at the image of God is right before our very eyes. And that's why if you're a single person right now, God must be in the center of your relationship. And if you're seeing someone that God is not in the center of relationship, I like what the guy said. We're just friends right now. Some of us are getting too close, singles, with someone, and you're, the person that you're dating, they don't even have God yet. So if you two decide to get married and you do not have God, you can go this way. We'll talk to the singles for a moment. And you decide to get married and you do not have God, this is what you look like. We don't reflect the image of God. We don't reflect that. You know what that means now? We're open game for the enemy. I want God in the center of my marriage of my relationships without God in the center we can't we don't even know how to love God is love so if God leaves our marriage well there goes forgiveness how to forgive love just left sacrificial love left and now it's just me and her and that's why the enemy wants to destroy the image of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to say this. You look at the, the book of Genesis about the snake. What should they do with the snake? Because snakes will try to come. You didn't like my answer the last time. Oh, right? no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go <laughs> Kill ahead. the snake. Kill the snake. <laughs> There's going to be times when snakes are going to try to come yeah. in to disrupt the perfect image of God. Right. What's a snake? A snake could be unforgiveness. Spouse did something wrong, you don't want to forgive. A snake could represent unforgiveness. A snake could represent lust. And when we allow sin to come into the marriage... We start to destroy the image of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. How many want God in the center of their marriage? Look at your neighbor and tell them, keep God in the center of everything. Give these guys a round of applause. Thank you guys. Thank you. Are you guys getting it? 
So what's the first purpose of marriage? What's the first purpose of marriage? What are some examples of maybe God's image? Okay, so we're going to take that out of Galatians 5, through 23. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit yes. in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience. Yes. Again, when you take God out, we don't get none of this. Right. As soon as God is removed, God is not even in the picture. Maybe here today you don't know God. You're saying, man, I want God. In about 10, 15 minutes, you're going to have God. He's going to be right there in the center of your life. But we don't have God. We get none of that. We get no patience. Yeah, Patience. No patience. Why are you no stopping patience. there? No patience. No patience. Kindness. <laughs> are you okay, honey? <laughs> kind. Okay, kindness. I'll, I'll let me talk to them for okay. a minute. Okay, so patience is okay. an area that God is working on me in. Robert's very patient. Robert has all these. No, I don't. Robert's. Robert's. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Anyways. Um, <laughs> So patience, I think um, I, I discovered actually that we didn't have a marriage challenge last year. And I do remember bringing yeah. this up in the previous marriage challenge. So I've been patient for two years. Two years, okay. So I didn't take a picture of our closet because I was too embarrassed. But this is basically Wait, how you're really going to go there right now? Looks. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay, that's Robert's side of the closet. Okay? I didn't bring no pictures of stuff from her. She set me up over here. So, Chris, you got to help me next time, man. So patience, ladies. Oh Even my gosh. when you have to look at this every day when you open your closet. I cleaned it once or twice the last couple of years. I did. Anyhow. So, uh... <laughs> Again, these things cannot be produced in our lives. These fruits cannot be produced in our lives without God and the Holy Spirit. You have to realize this. Your neighbors, your family, um, co-workers, sometimes the only God they're going to see yes. is in your relationships. Mm -hmm. What are the neighbors seeing at 2 o'clock in the morning? Are they seeing arguments in the house or are they seeing just sound asleep? I wonder, I, I was wondering about this because I, I need a lot of work. You're saying I don't, I need a lot of work on this. I, I wonder if Pastor Marco did a little, a little thing with us. It'd be scary if he did. Hope I'm not giving him any good ideas. So Marco would walk with us with the camera. He would send a video crew with us and see how Who, we... Us? Well, oh, not us, oh, not us, oh, not okay. us. <laughs> if the, the video team went with us. And they videotaped oh, them. us. them, okay, yeah. They videotaped us for 24 hours a day for seven, for seven days. And we popped your video on the screen. Ooh. Are we reflecting the image of mm. God? And that's what the enemy has come to do. He's come to destroy right. the image of God. Of God, yes. but I'm declaring we're getting the image of God back. People will see God on how we treat each other. People will see God when we're at work. People will see God when we're at Stater Brothers. People will see God when we're at McDonald's and they forgot my French fries. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I'm, I must be getting hungry. I don't know why I came up with that. So, God is the foundation of marriage. Yes. And in order for marriage to work, you need God. I love that. So purpose number one of marriage, what is it, you guys? Let's say who's taking notes. What is it? They got it. People to see God. Purpose number two, honey. Number two is to raise godly children. That's it. Malachi 2.15. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife in body and spirit? You are his. And what does he want? He's saying two people getting together, they're getting married. What is God looking for? What does he want? Godly children from your union. So guard your heart. Man, guard your house. Guard what you're watching. Guard what you're listening to. Guard your house with everything you've got. 
Remain loyal to the wife of your youth. Um, when I had my daughter, because she, she's my first, my first baby, um, when I had her being pregnant and actually thinking about going into um, the delivery room to deliver her didn't scare me. None of that scared me. The thought of bringing her home scared me because God was entrusting me to raise her up in the things of God. And I didn't want to make a mistake. And I know yeah. us as parents, we're not perfect. So we will make some mistakes along the way. But you know what we need to do is we need to just go before God, repent, ask him for forgiveness, tell him to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. And um, he'll, he'll have them turn out okay. <laughs> He's got it covered. He's That's got right. them. And maybe you have kids real, real quick. Maybe you have kids right now. Uh, maybe they're older. How many have kids right now? They, you, have, you have kids that are 20 years and older. They're just older, 25, 26, whatever. They're older, right? They're not, some of them are not even living in the home. You're saying, Pastor, well, how do I raise them? They're not even here with me. Man, you might be, I ran into a, a mom the other day, you know. She told me her, her son is in prison. Mm. And she asked me that. How do, I, how do I even reach my kid now? He's in prison. I said, this is how you reach your kid. If your kid is gone from home, let's say, yeah, they're in prison. This is what we do as a parent. We pray for our children. Yes. We pray for them. They're in prison. Lord, send that chaplain over. Let him have an encounter of God in that cell. And how else do we show them? Maybe they're, maybe they're moved. Maybe they, you got a son or daughter. They live in Texas. They're gone, Pastor. This is how we do it is living by example. There's a spiritual thing that happens when you're serving God as a parent and your kid doesn't even live with you. The angels begin to move. You're praying and God wakes your son up at 2 o'clock in the morning. He says, Mama, I got a dream last night that I got to give my life to Jesus. And you say, you're right, son. You're right, daughter. I've been praying for you. So raising godly children. I know you have a, a, a few things there you wanted to read on that as well. Um. Let me see. I just lost my spot. But yeah. you know what? I, I just was yeah. thinking in my mind, um, you know, there may be somebody in here that maybe um, have, hasn't had kids yet or oh. is unable to have kids. You know, right. um, the word says in um, Genesis 1, 20, I believe it's 28, it says, be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. You know, God has entrusted us with things, a purpose to carry out. So God has entrusted you to be fruitful in that area. And that yeah, area nice. just means to be, uh, to produce and to, um, yeah. to flourish in that area. So Love whatever that. it is that God has appointed you over, That's be right. fruitful and multiply in that area. I love that. I love that. Deuteronomy 6, I think it's first time. Yeah, verse 7. You know, your kids are with you and how do we, how do we train? And this is a you know, whole other topic that we could talk on for weeks. Um, but Deuteronomy 6, 7 is a practical way. How do we train our kids in the things of God? Deuteronomy 6, 7. Repeat them again and again to your children. It's talking about the commands of God, the Bible. If you go to verse 6, it talks about the commands of the Bible. Teach them to your children. Repeat them over and over. Talk about them when you're at home. When you're out on the road, when you're going to bed, and when you're getting up, tie them on your hands, wear them on your forehead, as right, write them on the doorsteps. It's saying to repeat the word. I think Pastor said earlier one of the questions, have a little time, schedule some time to have a Bible study with your kids. But the greatest thing we could do with our children is show them, it goes back to really point one, show them the image of God. Maybe you're thinking about a divorce. Show your kids you know, we're not going to quit right now. Right. We're not going to quit. Man, things are getting tough. Mm -hmm. Seems like I can't take this anymore. Let your kids see the tenacity. Let God, let your kids see that. You see, you know what? Things get tough, but we don't quit, son. Let your kids see how we treat each other. As your kids begin to see how you treat your wife and how you treat your husbands, your kids will be on fire for God. And there's sacrifices to be made. There's certain movies we can't watch. We haven't wa a rated our movie. Um, just, a, just an example of that. Some of the rated R movies get crazy nowadays. Some of the PG-13 movies now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're saying, well, we're going to watch this movie, you know, when they go to sleep. And we're going to do that. 
It's not what your kids, they're not going to follow what you say alone. They're going to follow what you do. And it's a spiritual thing. So as parents, man, you gotta, we got to discipline ourselves. Why? I want to show God to my kids. How many parents want to show God to their kids? I love that. We could keep on going. Let's, let's go over a few more purposes because of time. Okay. Purpose number three. Purpose number three is to fight together. Yes. This is In Deuteronomy 32, 30, 32, 30, it says, how could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight yeah. unless their rock has sold them? Love and that. the Lord had surrendered them. I love that. This is my fighting partner right here in the spiritual realm. When something tries to come into our home, this is my fighting partner right here. I remember when I got really sick. Uh, for the ones that don't know my story, man, I got hit with a sickness. Um, what was it called? I don't even know the name of it anymore. Achalasia. Achalasia. Yeah, they were saying that my nerves are shot. it's not yours, that's why. Yeah, it's not mine. That's why I'm not claiming it. <laughs> that's why I'm not even claiming a thing. And it got to the point where the doctors, I couldn't swallow food. So I couldn't, I got to the point, couldn't swallow water. I didn't know what was going on. Went to the doctors. They shot us out. They ran tests. They ran a, a camera down trying to figure out why I couldn't swallow. Man, I was, for me, I was dying. You know, I lost 40, 50 pounds um, just going through it. Who was my fighting partner? Right here. See, what the enemy wants to do. Is have us bickering over just dumb stuff, fighting each other. Mm -hmm. But is the fight between each other? No. Who's the, the fight against? Not. It is between, uh, you know, let me just share an example really quick. Yeah. So um, in the beginning of our marriage. What are you going to say? <laughs> okay, go ahead. In the no beginning more pictures, of our right? Marriage, no more pictures. No, no more pictures. Okay. But I did want to do like a little illustration here, but okay. I, we didn't do it. Um, but in the beginning of our marriage, um, I, I guess I was the one that would pick the fight. I guess you could say. I mean, that's, that's really all I really knew. <laughs> He's nodding his head yes. So I, I had like this illustration in my head where I, would, I was the one wearing the bo boxing gloves and he was wearing the knee pads. Because I would be the one to pick the fight, but he was always the one to, to just take it to prayer and just cover me in prayer. And he actually was able to help me get through and discovering the fight isn't between us. Because right. even now, when, when right. we have arguments, they're so dumb. I don't even know why even, like, let it stay in my mind or why we even bicker about it. Yeah. Because it's, it's so petty and so little yeah. um, compared to, you know, what God has in store for right. us, compared to what he has for right. us to accomplish. Right. Um, let me see. It says, so maybe, maybe... Us as wives, maybe, you know, our husbands are going through something. You know, this isn't the time for us to tell them, see, I told you so. This isn't the time for us to sit there and throw it in their face. This isn't the time for us to, right, to right. sit there and say, see, um, you're wrong. You're always wrong. You need to make, let me make the decisions. No, this is the time where we come together and we fight together. Fight together. You know, we come together and we just begin to yeah. pray. And God can only accomplish things through prayer. That's, right. That's the first step. So it. don't fight with each other. Yeah, love it. Take it to prayer. I love it. Ephesians um, 6, 12 says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but yeah. against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, yeah. against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenlies. That's exactly right. The fight is not against each other. The fight is against this real enemy. Now, when I say the word enemy, what does that mean, enemy? There is a real enemy called the devil. For the ones that are new in church, who's the devil? The devil is this. There was God and all of his angels in the beginning of time. Devil, his name, his name is Lucifer. Lucifer was an angel. Lucifer, if you look at the Bible, he wanted to rise himself above God. So God seen that in heaven and he kicks out Lucifer out of heaven. The Bible says that one third of the angels followed Lucifer. How many know Lucifer is cunning, he's tricky. So he, one third of the angels follow him. So when you read the book of Genesis, you're reading, the serpent came. Who was the serpent? He was the devil. Who was the serpent? The devil. 
He was a devil at that time trying to destroy the marriage. So there's a real enemy that's out to, to, to destroy your family and to destroy your children. But that's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago and defeated the devil once and for all. He died on the cross and Satan now is underneath our feet. So now we have full authority over the enemy. That's why Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. And I'm declaring it now. Right now, we're going to know how to fight together. She's my warring part, my spiritual warfare partner. Purpose number four, you can just jot these down, a couple of them. We're out of time. We need like four hours. Well, let's ask him. Can you guys be here till 3 o'clock? Is that okay? <laughs> okay, we got 10 claps. Maybe not. Maybe not. They're like, uh-uh, I'm hungry. Read off yet a couple of purpose number four. Let's see, who, let's see who's taking notes. What is purpose number one? Yeah, let's show, let's show the world. Let's show our kids God. Leave God in the center. What's, what's purpose number two? They got it. They're taking notes. Yep. And what's purpose number three? Yeah, purpose number four, honey. Purpose number four is to have a lifelong companionship. Oh, I love that. Genesis 2.18 says, then the Lord... God said, I see that it is, good, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make the companion he needs one just right for him. Wow, I love that. So one of the other purposes is a lifelong companionship. That word lifelong, even talking to Pastor Marco, why is it a lifelong companionship? Because it takes a lifelong, it takes time. <laughs> it takes time to get to know and hash out all the stuff. Maybe you just got married or maybe you've been married for a while. And things are coming up. Let all that stuff come up. I, I spoke to a couple in the first service. Things are coming up. And I want to say this. You guys, this is fun. We're having fun. We're laughing. This is great. But the devil is going irate right now. When we showed the image a few minutes ago, the devil was like, no, don't show him the image. Don't let them know who they are. Don't show them. Because the devil's after our families. Some of us were going through it. Abuse is coming to the family. We're talking real issues. We're talking real challenges. But I thank God that God doesn't leave us right there. We're here today receiving freedom. We're getting the, who needs a miracle today? Who needs a move of God in their family? Their man, that's what God is doing. Yes. Man, I just felt the Holy Spirit right there. Mm -hmm. There's chains that are just being broken. This, when we do it, when we do this 30, 30 days and it, the devil is mad. I talked to a couple nine o'clock. He said, man, things are coming up. There's going to be things that's going to come up. In the next 30 days, let them come up so we could deal with it. Maybe an anger, a, a lust comes. Where did this come from? It's just stuff that was there. It's coming up. Let's deal with it. That way, singles, when you guys get ready for marriage, you deal with all the hashing. Everything is out. When you say, I do, the bag is empty, and both of you guys are free, and you're able to do ministry. Oh, this is awesome. We're going too much. Go ahead. You cover the last ones. Uh, I'm done. Purpose number five. Purpose number five. To do ministry together. That's it. Oh, Genesis 2.18 says, then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Wow, I love that. Helper is an assistant, someone to assist. This is my helper. This is my assistant here. For what? For ministry. To save souls. To help a community. We're getting ready to launch a brand new church in Pomona, June 27th. We hit the streets. We go out to Pomona. We go out on Saturdays. And we hit the streets out there. Purpose for marriage, the last thing, to do ministry together. I love this statement. Spouses who do ministry together, stay together. Like an apple keeps the doctor away. Is that what it was? Yeah, an apple day. Apple day keeps the doctor away. You do ministry, doing stuff together, watch what happens. I love it, the couple over here, it was 9 o'clock at this service. My husband just got baptized. Can you give it up for that, that couple? My husband just got baptized. That's it. You're placing God in the center of your marriage. And watch what God will do. How many learned something today? You guys learned something? You guys got it? Let's all stand up if we can. And 
Next week, Gunger is going to be here, the guy who wrote the book that we're reading right now, um, Laugh Your Way Through a Better Marriage. Oh, my gosh. He's going to be here next Sunday. You don't want to miss it, huh? Yeah, he's hilarious. He's so funny. He's amazing. If we can, nobody leave. We've got a few people moving right now. Those are some of our, our prayer guys and gals. They're going to come up in a minute, pray for people. Um, if you're here today, if I could get all your attention up here for a moment. Get all your attention up here for a second. We're almost done. We've got another minute. We're done. There's a couple of things. You're saying, man, I, you're talking about marriage, relationships. Our marriage needs some help. My marriage is on the rocks. We need some help. Or, man, the image of God, we've, we've removed God. Or God is not in the center. Man, we want to put God back in the center. My kids, man, I want my kids to, to love God. And man, I want to be able to do ministry together. I want to help people together. And, and maybe you're here today as a married couple and you're saying, man, I need some prayer. In a moment, you could come to the front. We're going to have altar workers here. I want to pray with you. The Bible says when two come in agreement on anything in the name of Jesus, man, it's done. Sometimes you're only one agreement away, one prayer away from everything starting to shift in your life. Just one prayer. So at the end, you, you might be thinking about food. We're going here and you say, we need some prayer. Hang out. In a moment, we're going to open up this section. You could come up. The, uh, the, the worship team will be playing some music. And we could just pray for you. Here's a second group. If you're saying, Pastor, you mentioned God in the center. I seen that whole the thing you were, you were showing earlier. God's not in the center of my life. He's not in the center of our marriage. Well, this is the day. This is the day to put God right there in the center of your life. Not only, yes, to have a good relationship, but it goes further than that. You know, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, a lot of us are not going to be here. 100 years, I won't be here. Uh, how old am I? I forgot how old I am. 43? I won't be here in 100 years. What do you mean, Pastor? You're like, no. There's nobody on the earth that's 143. There's no such thing as that. So for sure in 100 years, I'll be gone. I won't be on this planet earth anymore. But where will you be, Pastor? Here's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in heaven with Jesus. Our family will be in heaven with Jesus. Well, Pastor, doesn't, well, doesn't everybody go to heaven? That's, that's where we all go. That's not what the Bible describes. There's a real heaven and there's a real hell. Pastor, hell? Yeah. There's a real hell. More real than me and you standing here right now. Well, who goes to hell? Everyone who does not place their faith in Jesus. First John chapter 5. All who have the Son, which is Jesus, they have eternal life. Whoever does not have the Son, they don't have eternal life. So there's a heaven and there's a hell. Having a good marriage, this is great, but let's go deeper. I want to make sure, me and Veronica, our team, our pastors, our leaders, we want to make sure this. If you died today, we want to make sure that you're going to heaven. We want to make sure that you're right with God. Maybe you've been running from God. Maybe it's your first day back in a while and you're saying, man, I just want a fresh start. I got to hit that little reset button. I just want to start over again. I want to rededicate my life to God. Maybe that's you right now. I'm so happy that you're here today. So here we go. I'm going to count to three. Maybe you're watching online. Don't let this moment pass you by. You're at your home. You might be driving a truck right now, a truck driver. Pull over for a minute. This is your eternity right now. You're watching this from another country. This is eternity right now. So here it goes. I'm going to count to three. And you say, Pastor, I want God in the center of my marriage. I want God in the center of, of my life. I want to receive Jesus. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. That is me, Pastor. This is me. When I count to three, when I say the number three, all across this auditorium, just slip your hand up. Say, that's me. I want God. I want to go to heaven. I want to get right with him. I need God in the center right now. That's me. 
When I count to three, raise your hands. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, raise them. Raise them, raise them. See a few hands there. See a couple hands there. See four, five, six hands there. Three, four, five, six, seven hands over there. One, two, three, four, five, six over there. Another five. Yeah, one, two. See you over there. Awesome. All those who just raised your hands, this is what I want you to do. I want you to make a bold move for God. All those raised your hands. I want you to come up. I want you to meet me up here, me and my wife and the team. And we're going to lead you right now in a prayer to receive Jesus as your Savior. Come on down. Come on down. Come, come, come give your life to Jesus, come, come, come give your life to God, come. Church, 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 church. Nine o'clock service, we had we had 30 people give their lives to Jesus. 30 people, nine o'clock in the morning. Before I even count, there's probably 50, I'm gonna count right now. Church, can you can you give all these and gals give them a big shout like you're at a like you're at a Dodger game? You're at give them a big shout. Say, yeah! Woo! One, two, three. Four, five, six. Pastor, why are you counting? Because heaven is counting right now. Every name, every person who puts their faith in Jesus, their name gets recorded in what's called the book of life. So when you die, the book will open and your name will be in there or it's not. These people are about to get the name in the book. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, so happy to see you guys, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, you guys should be screaming your heads off right now, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, you come up, 35, you come up, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. Did you come up? You come up? 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. Yeah, now, that's what we're going to do. Everybody that came up, some of you guys are just crying right now. So why am I crying? That's just God touching you. That's just God touching you. Allow him to touch you. Yes, yes. There's people getting free right now. Marriages are being restored. And right when I say this prayer for salvation, you're saying, Pastor, I'm on my seat, but I need prayer for my marriage. I need prayer of single, dating, or whatever it is. Just got a bad report from the doctor, or I just lost my aunt. I just lost my uncle. And whatever you need. When we're done praying with these here, leading them, into a salvation prayer. You need prayer. Don't leave here. We'll hang out. We'll just come up. We're going to pray with you. We'd love to love to love to pray with you. Now here in the front, I'm going to say a prayer right now. You're going to repeat it after me. Once you repeat this prayer, God now becomes the center of your life. He becomes your everything. Your name gets recorded in this book of life. That if you died, they would open it up. What's your name, sweetie? Vanessa. You die 
40 years down the road, right? Not 100, because no one's going to be here 145, right? You die 40 years from now, right? You die. They're going to open up the book. It's Vanessa, what's your last name? Cervantes. They're going to open up the book. Cervantes, A, B, C. There it goes, C. Cervantes, Vanessa. She's in the book of life. She gave her life to Jesus April 18th, 1240, on the corner of four, right here, 4860 Hallmark Parkway, a church called the Way World Outreach. Honey, you can enter eternity. Come into the place that I have prepared. That's going to be a real conversation, the coolest one ever. And you guys are all going to have that same conversation when you stand before God. Everyone bow their head and close their eyes. Repeat after me. And then right when we're done praying, hang out for two more minutes or all two workers can exchange phone numbers and help you with your walk. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, you are my everything. God, I ask you to become the center of my life. Become the center of all my relationships. Set me free from all my bad habits and all my addictions. And from this day forward, I will show the world my new life. I am saved. I am born again. I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give these a round of applause. At home, go to igotsaved.com. We'll help you with your next step. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. We're going to hang out. We're going to pray. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. And then Wednesday night, we're live in person. Wednesday night revival. Pastor Jason Lozano, you don't want to miss it, you guys. If God is for you, who could come against you?